Kinematic graphs are a great way to um, display the motion of an object and kind of encapsulate all the information in a real quick snapshot. So we already looked a little bit at kinematic graphs for constant velocity and let's review that a tiny bit here. So let's say that we have two different objects moving at constant speed and the position time graph for one of them looks like so and for the other one let's say it's not as steep let's um, grab a different color here real quick just for fun all right so I've got a blue and an orange object so what can we tell just by looking at this graph well I don't have numbers or tick marks on my scale so I don't know exactly how fast they're going but I know that they're both moving in the positive direction because they both have positive slopes and the magnitude of the slope tells me their speed so the magnitude of this slope is larger than that so I know that the blue object is traveling faster than the orange and we can make velocity graphs as well it is the slope on the position graph that informs the velocity graph okay so slope takes us from this graph to this one well we know that the slope is constant and positive for both of these lines which means that they both have constant positive velocities um, so just like regular Cartesian coordinates we're going to take this to be zero velocity that to be positive and that to be negative so here I just have the first quadrant because we don't often have a reason to uh, call our uh, position negative but we do often have negative velocity so our velocity graphs are going to have the first and fourth quadrants here so we can handle that so if I'm going to graph this well if the slope is constant and positive the velocity is going to be constant so the value is constant so that's going to be a horizontal line so we'll do the blue line first here it's just going to be a straight flat line uh, for the orange one this is also going to be a straight flat line and we don't know exactly where uh, it's going to lie, but it's going to be somewhere in between uh, the velocity value of the blue object and zero. So just qualitatively here, we can see both constant positive velocities, but the blue one has a greater velocity than the orange. All right, let's look at another situation here of a couple of objects moving. Again, we're still at constant velocity. Uh, let's say one, our blue object is doing something like this. And let's say our orange object is doing something like this. So what can we tell about this? Well, they don't both start at the origin. So what does the y-intercept of our graph signify? Well, that is the location when time is equal to zero. So that is what we call the initial position. So these two objects didn't start at the same place. Uh, if we think about positive as kind of the direction you want to go, you could say that the orange object started out ahead of the blue object, but its slope was less, so the blue object ended up passing the orange object. And that's what this intersection here is telling us. That's not telling us that they had the same speed at that moment there. That is when they are at the same position at the same time, so it's when the blue object passes but the slope is the speed so at no point in time does the blue object have a lesser speed than the orange it's going faster the entire time it just started behind and had to catch up so how would that look over here on our velocity graphs well again we would have a constant positive for our blue line and our orange line will be also constant and positive but it's going to be of a lesser magnitude than the blue line so really identical to our last velocity graph so the velocity graphs don't include information about the starting location they just include information about the slopes of these lines all right let's look at one more constant velocity graph and then we'll talk about what our graphs look like when we accelerate so let's keep our blue guy something like this and then our orange guy let's have it doing something like actually I don't like that let's uh, let's let the orange guy be faster for once so we'll start way up here and we'll pull it down like this ok 
Okay, orange. All right, so again, we have constant slopes, constant velocities, and all that good stuff. But now we have one with a negative slope. So not only did it start in a different location, it's heading in the other direction. It is still the case that where the lines cross is where they pass each other, um, but it doesn't tell us anything about their speeds. So if we're going to graph the velocity graphs for these, once again, our blue graph will just be constant positive, nice up here. Now, here I've got a negative value to my slope, so I've got to be below the time axis here. And we also need to uh, look at the relative slopes. This guy is steeper than this guy, so that means it needs to be farther away, more negative than that guy is positive. So we're going to put our line for our orange velocity graph down here somewhere. If we had numbers, we could actually find the slope and scale it perfectly, but this is just qualitative once again. All right, so we get a graph that looks something like this for the velocity graphs of corresponding to these position time graphs. Now we can add acceleration into the mix. So we're going to have a third graph, and again, acceleration could be positive or negative, so we're going to have the first and fourth quadrants included on those graphs. I'm going to jump over to uh, this little web demo that I showed you earlier. So we used this previously with constant velocity. Now I'm going to start at a position of zero, which is just over here on the left. It's going to start at rest, and it's going to have an acceleration <clears throat> of one meter per second squared. Uh, we haven't really mentioned that unit there, meters per second squared. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity we mentioned. So that's how many meters per second your speed is changing each second. So it's meters per second per second, and those seconds combined to give a second squared. So here, what do we expect to see for our position time graph? In constant velocity, we always had constant slopes, but if my velocity is changing, we're going to have a changing slope. And I start out with a velocity of zero, so I should start out with zero slope over here. I'm accelerating, so I'm speeding up, and it's positive acceleration, so I'm speeding up in the positive direction. So my graph starts to curve, and I get a nice curve upward. My velocity graph, instead of being a horizontal line now, it's increasing at a constant rate. So the slope of the velocity is the acceleration, and we had constant acceleration over here. So we get a constant slope here now, and that corresponds to a horizontal line on our acceleration graph. So here is one possible situation. Um, for your position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. In fact, there's only four options that you can ever have. You can combine those four options uh, into more complicated things. But really, any motion where we're assuming acceleration is constant, and it can change, but we tend to not analyze those situations. Um, any situation where there's constant acceleration can be broken down into one of four different uh, collections of position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. So let me go ahead and kind of copy this over real quick so we've got it. So our position graph will be curving up something like this, and I'll just go ahead and do this quick. Our velocity graph will be curving upward. That should be a constant slope. Sorry, I'm not so great with this pen yet. There you go. Position, velocity, acceleration. Okay, let's look at another situation over here. So we'll reset it. Uh, another thing we can have is we can start out with an initial velocity and we can be slowing down. Uh, and In that case, my initial velocity is 10, so I'm not going to start out with a slope of 0. I'm going to start out with a slope of 10. And if I'm slowing down, what should happen to my uh, slope of this graph? Well, the slope should decrease. So we go ahead and hit Start, and I start out with a slope of 10. And this guy should start tipping over here as we slow down and we stop. OK, so this guy tips over. And this guy started at 10, goes down linearly until you have a velocity of 0. And I've got a constant negative acceleration here. So let's fill that in over here. We'll get some new graphs. All right, so this guy starts with a non-zero slope and kind of tips over. Our velocity graph starts up here, goes down, 
and our acceleration is the slope of this guy, so it's going to be a negative constant acceleration. Uh, corresponds to our negative constant slope of this guy. It's still not quite horizontal, is it? There, that looks good. Okay, so there's situation number two. Uh, situation number three... I'm going to start over here on the right hand side now and again we could start at rest these are basically identical to the first two situations just having the directions reversed so I'm going to start over here at position 50 which means I'm not going to start at the origin on this graph once I hit start this dot will jump up here to 50 and I still start out with a flat line on my position graph because the slope is the velocity and the velocity is zero and now I'm going to speed up, but I'm going to speed up in the negative direction. So this guy is going to start curving, and it's going to start curving downward, because that means I get a more and more negative slope. The velocity start at zero, gets more and more negative. So you are speeding up once again, it's just in the other direction. So let's add that here to our little collection of graphs. Start at rest and speed up in the negative direction. Start at zero velocity my speed is increasing even though my velocity is becoming more negative its magnitude is increasing acceleration is constant and negative okay so the last option we have is once again starting over here but now we start out with an initial velocity in the negative direction and we're going to accelerate in the positive direction. So here's an example where we have a positive acceleration, but as we'll see, the car is not speeding up, it's slowing down. So it was moving in the negative direction, being pushed in the positive direction, so it's slowing down. Okay, so this guy has an initial negative slope, and that slope is lessening as we go, has an initial negative velocity, the velocity becomes less and less negative until it goes to zero and the acceleration is constant and positive so let's add this last guy uh, here we start out with a negative velocity and we kind of level out something like that we start out with negative value on our velocity graph we go to a value of zero and on our acceleration we have a positive acceleration even though we're slowing down because as I mentioned in the last one, if the signs are opposite, you're slowing down. If they're the same, uh, then you're speeding up, whether both positive or both negative. Now you might ask, what about if the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative? Um, so that can obviously happen. And you'll have a constant acceleration, but that is pretty much the same thing as starting with no velocity and having an acceleration. It's just that we started later on when we were already moving. So uh, qualitatively, the graphs really aren't going to look any different. They're just going to start with some slope to them and get even more slope. So that definitely can happen. All right, so jumping back to our picture here, just one more time. The slope going this way the slope of the position graph tells you the velocity graph the slope of the velocity graph tells you the acceleration graph so hooray fun with graphs of motion